gentlemen. This is your host, inviting you in through the squeaking door. Come in, come in, won't you? We're having a bit of a demonstration here tonight. Presto, the magician, is sawing a corpse in half. And for an extra fee, he'll saw the halves in half. But uh, we'll have to take up a collection of quarters. <laughs> Don't worry. He won't go out on a limb. Not your limb. He's strictly a torso man, only more so. And if you ever want him to uh, decapitate anybody, remember, he gets five dollars a head. <laughs> Tonight's inner sanctum mystery, Over My Dead Body, is an original radio drama written by Robert Sloan and stars Larry Haynes in the role of Robert with Vera Allen as Mary. Ready now, friends. You've heard of dead men who turn over in their graves, haven't you? Well, tonight's story is about a grave that turns over on a dead man. The casket was ordered from the local undertaking establishment. It was delivered to a private mausoleum on the estate of old Mr. Edgar Finley. But when it arrived, his housekeeper couldn't understand why the eccentric old gentleman had purchased it. Mr. Finley, did you order a casket? Oh, yes, Mary. I ordered it. I told him to put it downstairs. In the crypt of the mausoleum. But what do you want with a casket? Who is it for? Me? What? Now, don't be alarmed, Mary. I'm not nearly as eccentric as most people seem to think. I need that casket. Why? Because I'm going to die tonight. Mr. Finch, what are you saying? I'll call the doctor. No, no. You don't understand. There's nothing wrong with me, Mary. I just want to be sure my money falls into the right hands when I die. Oh, don't talk about dying, Mr. Finley. I've got to consider it, Mary. I've got to make sure the bulk of my estate will go to the most deserving person. I'm going to make believe I'm dead. That way I can find out a great deal more about my prospective age. You mean you're going to get into that casket and be closed up in the mausoleum? Oh, I won't be closed up for long. Just strong enough to make it look real. Then I'll ring the bell for you to let me out. But... Now, don't be so frightened, Mary. This one. There's a wire running from this room to the mausoleum. Oh, Mr. Finley. I'll connect it up with the casket before you close me in. And whenever I need you, I'll just ring the bell. No, no, I won't let you do it. Mary, you'll do as I say. Now, stop being such a sentimental old fool and get yourself a pencil and a piece of paper. I want you to take down the addresses of my niece, Eleanor, and my cousin, Robert. You'll have to send them telegrams in the morning. Telegrams? Notifying them of my death. Don't you understand, Mary? Mr. Edgar Finlay has just passed on. This way, Mr. Robert. The casket is down here in the crypt. Oh, thank you. Careful when he stares, Eleanor. It's not very light. I can see. Only I wish you hadn't brought me down here. I don't want to look at Uncle Edgar's casket. I do. I think it's only decent for us to pay our respects. Um, when was he laid to rest, Mary? This morning. Mm-hmm. It all happened very suddenly, didn't it? I mean, nobody ever knew he was sick. Well, what did he die of? His heart, Mr. Rabbit. It gave out on him. When? Good heavens, must you ask me all these questions? I've got a right to know what happened. Eleanor has to. But I told you, he, he died during the night. Without any warning? The doctor said with his heart? Uh, yes. Well, it seems awfully strange. He never complained about his heart before. Yeah, that's exactly what I was thinking. Um, was an autopsy performed on the body? No. I see. Where's the casket? Uh, right here, Mr. Robert. Well, don't stand there. Aren't you going to open the lid? Why, no. What for? I want to see him. Why do you think I came down here? But you can't open a casket. You can raise the lid. Oh, Robert, no. Don't be a fool. I've got to make sure he's really down here. Don't you believe me? No. Raise the lid. Mr. Robert. Raise it, I said. All right. 
I'm not lying to you, Mr. Robert. You can look inside now. Thank you. Is he there? Yes. I am. Uh, I guess Mary was telling you the truth. I'm sorry. That's all right. You, uh, you can lower the lid now. Yes, sir. I was just thinking how strange you looked. It was just the way you looked in life. All right, Mr. Finley, I hear you ringing. I'll come to you right now and let you out. Mary. Oh, good evening, Mr. Roberts. I want to talk to you, Mary. I'll be back in a minute. I, I want to talk to you now. I, honestly, Mr. Roberts, Look, I... Don't get excited. I know all about it. About what? The trick. What's it for? Roger Finley isn't dead. Why is he lying in that casket? I don't know what you're talking about. Don't lie to me. I can see him bleeding underneath the glass. Why are you making believe he's dead? I'm not. I- I'll talk to you later, Mr. Roberts. Stay where you are. No, I've got to go to him. He'll suffocate in there if I don't. I said stay where you are. Please, didn't you hear that bell? He's ringing for me. Let him ring. But the casket is locked from the outside. He'll die if I don't let him out. Wouldn't that be just too bad? Mr. Robert, you wouldn't let him die. Wouldn't I? As far as I know, he's dead already. But he isn't dead. I'm telling you he isn't. I can't hear you. Let me go. He'll be buried alive. What if he is? When he really dies, I stand a very good chance of him hurting some more. No, no, I won't let you kill him. Oh, I'm not killing him. You are, Mary. You're the only one who knew about this arrangement with the bell. And if you open your mouth about it, the police will arrest you for murder. Mr. Robert, please. Don't let him die. Don't. Take it easy, Mary. It won't last very long. Well, just let him keep ringing. Until he, uh, can't ring anymore. Take him there without lifting a finger to her. Stop it, will you? You won't get away with him. Would I? Who's going to stop it? Your mind will stop you and your conscience. You'll hear that bell ringing in your mind as long as you live. Shut up. You'll hear it, Robert, day and night. You'll think about him in that casket, tortured and gasping for his last breath. You'll never be able to forget. I told you to shut up. What's that? What's that bell? He's still alive. No. No, 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 he can't be. I locked the casket with my own hands. There isn't enough air in there to breathe. That's not the same, bro. It's a telephone. You see how it tortures you, Robert? You see how it preys on your mind? Don't talk about it. Answer that phone. Yes, sir. Hello? Hello, Mary. This is Mr. Cadman calling. Yes, Mr. Cadman? I'd like to speak to you about Mr. Finley's will. As you know, I was Mr. Finley's attorney, and something has come up that particularly concerns you. Well, can I speak to you later, Mr. Cadman? Huh? Oh, why, well, certainly. I'll be home all evening. Thank you, sir. What does Cadman want? Something about the will. He wants to speak to me. Why didn't you find out what it was? I didn't think he'd let me talk. I'm nervous about that bell. I... What's the matter? Listen. Can't you hear it? What? The bell. It's ringing again. I don't hear anything. It's him ringing the bell. He's still alive. No, you're, you're just trying to frighten it's me. It's there, I tell you. I can hear it. You're lying. Listen, Robert, listen. Robert! 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 Hurry, Mary, hurry. Before all of our friends out, we've come to the mausoleum. I don't know why we did come, Mr. Roberts. It won't ease your conscience any to see his body. Don't argue with me. I've got to know. I've got to find out if he's still in the casket. All right. All right, now, quick, unlatch it and open the lid. Open it yourself. You killed him. Mary, I'm warning you not to annoy me anymore. My nerves won't stand. What's the matter, Mr. Roberts? 
Do you still hear that bell? Open the casket. All right. I'll open it. Do you want to raise the lid, or shall I? Never mind, I'll do it. He's there, all right. Only this time he's dead. This time his tortured body is tightened up and twisting from gasping for air. Stop it, stop it. What's wrong, Mr. Roberts? Are you afraid to see what you've done? Call the lid. Look, Mr. Roberts, look. He's rolled over in his grave. out of my mind. They're driving me crazy. Why don't they stop? Why can't I make them? No, 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 no. Please, please stop, 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 stop. That's better. That's better. That's the way it's got to be. That's got to be silent in my mind. They're closing. They're barely swinging it from this grave. I've got to stop them. I've got to cut the wire. Mary! Mary, where are you? You're ringing that bell. What bell? I can't hear anything ringing. What? What? Stop, Tom. It's your mind, Mr. Roberts. There wasn't any bell. Don't lie to me. You've been ringing it all the time, haunting me with it. I don't know what you're talking about. Where's the wire? Where is it? Where's the bell? Right over here. Give it to me. Mr. Roberts, Give it to me, I said. I'll fix it so it won't ring again. There. There. Disconnected now. Oh, never ring. No. No, no, I can't see. It's another power. There's only one, Mr. Roberts. You're doing it. You're doing it. It's a trick. You're doing it with your foot. You want me to lose my mind? Let me go. You see? It isn't ringing anymore. Go. me. I warned you not to torture me, Mary. I told you my nerves wouldn't stand. behind the sofa in the living room. And as the bell stops, he hears a door open behind him and footsteps in the hall. Who? Who's there? Who's out there? Why, it's I, Robert. Mr. Cadman. Nobody answered the front door. Oh, were you ringing the bell? I've been ringing you for some time. That's why I took the liberty of letting myself in. Uh, where's Mary? Uh, Mary? Yes. Why are you looking at me like that? For heaven's sake, what's going on here tonight? Why? Well, I called Mary earlier in the evening about Mr. Finley's will. She said she'd call me back, but she never did. Why, I, I don't know why not. Well, neither do I. I've been phoning here all evening, but nobody answers the call. Oh. That's what the bells were. What? Uh, nothing, nothing. Yes, uh, well, Robert, I've got to speak to Mary about some very important business. Where is she? Why, I, I, I don't know. Well, you'd better find out if you... Now, look, what do you want, Mr. Catlin? Make it short. Mary's gone into town and I'm busy. Too busy to find out about your inheritance? Why, uh... No. Yeah. I thought that might interest you. The will is supposed to be read tomorrow morning. But it won't be read unless I speak to Mary. It won't even be opened. What? Well, what do you mean? You can't hold up that will. You can't stop us from getting what belongs to us. I can't. But Mr. Finley can. Mr. Finley? Yes. He made a last request before he died. What? That the will is not to be read. They it herself. Mary. Mary. Who's there? But it's I, Eleanor. 
What do you want? Well, Robert, why are you in Mary's room? I'm looking through some papers. Mary's gone away for a few days, and Mr. Cadman said the will couldn't be read unless she opened it. She must have it here. The will? Uncle Edgar's will? Yes, yes. He... Well, don't stand there staring at me. We've got to find that will. But Mary hasn't got it. How do you know? Where is it? Well, Mr. Cadman must have it. He was Uncle Edgar's attorney. Well, then why does Mary have... The bell. The bell, the bell is ringing again. Um, maybe it's Mary. Maybe she's come back. No, 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 no. It's from across the hall from Mr. Finley's room. I can't understand why a bell should ring in there. I've got to find it. Wait. Why, say, stop. I don't care. I've got to know why it rang. Oh, Robert, please. Please don't go in there. Why not? Because he wouldn't want you to disturb his room. Don't be a fool. Someone's working against us, Eleanor. Someone who doesn't want us to inherit that money. Who? Well, Mr. Cadman, maybe. It'd be just like him. There it is again. It's over here, Robert. It's right beside the bed. What? It's the bell that was downstairs. The one I yanked the wires from. It's been connected again. Who could have connected it? I don't know. I'm going to have a talk with Mr. Cadman. Wait for me, Eleanor. I'm going to find out about that will. I'm sorry, Robert. I'm not at liberty to show you the will. No one can see it without Mary's permission. Get up. What? Get up, I said. Open the safe. Put down that gun, you fool. Do what I tell you. Open the safe. No argument, Cadman. I mean every word I say. All right, Robert. I'll open the safe. Be quick about it. Certainly. Why are you in such a hurry? Because I don't trust you. I think you know too much. About you? About old man Finley. I think you were in on the plan from the very beginning with Mary. The faintest idea what you're talking about. Come on, come on. Isn't that safe open yet? It will be in a moment. Now, what do you want? What do you think? The will. Give it to me. Robert, you're making a great mistake. I'll be the judge of that. Disregarding Mr. Finley's... Give me the will. will. Very well, Robert. Here you are. I warn you, I'm going to report this to the police. Oh, no, you're not. No! Report it to anybody. Robert. Uh, oh, yes. You took a long time getting back. Did you speak to Mr. Cadman? Uh, yeah, yeah, yeah. I, I spoke to him. Uh, he's uh, going to read the will in the morning. Wouldn't he let you see it? Uh, no. Uh, what are you doing out here, Eleanor? Waiting for you to get back. I've been going over the outside of the house, facing those wires. What wires? The ones from that bell upstairs. They lead to the mausoleum, right in through the stone wall. Really? Hmm. Don't you think that's strange? I mean, why should wires run from the mausoleum directly into the house? I don't know. Your, uh, your Uncle Edgar was a pretty eccentric guy. But a bell, Robert. Why would anybody want to set up a bell in the house so that it could be rung from the mausoleum? Well, look, let, let's mind our own business. It is our business. There's something funny going on, and I'd like to know what it is. Well, we'll, we'll, we'll figure it out in the morning. No. It's got to be done now, before we go back into the house. Why? What's your hurry? Mary hasn't gone, Robert. I, I don't know where she is, but she hasn't really gone. How do you know? Well, her clothes and everything. They're all in the room. She hasn't even taken her bag. Why, well, that doesn't mean anything. It does to me. I think something's happened to her. Robert, I think we ought to call the police. Now, don't be silly. I think we ought to have them investigate those wires. What for? Just to be on the safe side. Is there any reason why we shouldn't call the police? Well, well, no. Well, then let's go inside. No, wait a minute. Wait a minute. Now, look, we, we don't have to call anybody. We can investigate those wires ourselves. Just the two of us? Yeah, 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 sure, why not? Well, I... Now, come on, I... come on. You you just show me where those wires are. No, huh? I... I don't want to go back there. What are you afraid of? Nothing's going to happen to you. Oh, on my own. Now, come on. It'll just take a few minutes to check on those wires at the mausoleum, and then we can come back and call the police. No. I'm not going to let you have your way, Eleanor. I want to see about those wires. And I... I wouldn't think of leaving you all alone in that big house. <laughs> My arm. I don't want to hurt you here, but you're going to come with me. Are you ready? Yes. Yes, I'm ready. I, I can't see a 
insane, Robert. Why are you making me go down into the crypt? The wires, Eleanor. They led down here. We've got to find out where they're attached on the inside. Wait. What's the matter? I, I thought I saw something pass in front of me. Keep walking. You're just stalling for time. Stalling? What do you mean? Don't you know? Don't you realize you have to die? Let me go! I can't afford to let you live, Eleanor. You'll find out too much. You'll put a rope around my neck. Oh, Robert, please. Don't fight please. me, Eleanor. Please. It has to be just the way as it was with Mary and Cadman. You killed him. They didn't want me to get the money. They were in my way. I was in your what? way, too, Robert. Who's there? Me, Robert. Your cousin. Edgar Finley. Ed... No, 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 no. You're dead. I would have been. If I hadn't protected myself against a murderer like you... One side of that casket comes off, Robert. It opens from the inside. You, you, you just don't believe you were dead. I had to, as soon as I found out what you were trying to do. Well, I never expected you to murder anyone else. Run for the police, Helena. Quick, come back here. Run, run. Stop it. Stop or I'll come after you. You won't do anything of the kind, Robert. You'll stay with me. Will I? No. Didn't you know I had a gun, Mr. Finley? You won't get out of here, Robert. I won't let you out. Come on, Mr. Finley. Come on, get the rest of it. Very well. I... Let go of my neck. Let go. Let go. No, Robert. I'll... No. Let go. This way, officer. Right down these stairs. It's awful quiet down there. I must have gotten out of... What is it, officer? Oh. Better not look. What? Are they dead? Yeah. Both of them. Mr. Finley was shot. Up close. Robert killed him. Yeah, must have. I, mean, I can't understand how. Good Lord. Mr. Finley killed him, too. What? His hands. They stiffened around Robert's neck. He died that way. Choking him. He saved my life. Guess he realized it all right. Look. There's a smile on his lips. was heard in the United States over CBS, the Columbia Broadcasting System, and has been rebroadcast for servicemen and women overseas through the facilities of the United States Armed Forces Radio Service, the voice of information and education. (laughs) 